What are fictitious forces? Let's start with Newton's second law of motion, acceleration equals force divided by mass. Acceleration by definition is the second derivative of position with respect to time, so we can write it like this. The time derivatives are often denoted with dots above, so we could write this like so as well. Or if we write this in Cartesian coordinates, it will look like this. The E hats are so-called versors. They are just unit vectors along the respective coordinate axis. The term multiplying EX is the X component of the acceleration, the one multiplying EY is the Y component, and same for Z. Now imagine we want to use another set of coordinates, still Cartesian, but rotating relative to the first set. We'll call this new set X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and they will be defined like so. And the reverse transformation will look like this. Omega is the angular speed of rotation here. As time is passing, omega t will grow and the cosine of omega t and sine of omega t will be changing periodically. A point with constant prime coordinates will thus be making circles in the non-primed coordinates and vice versa. If we now express the derivative of x, y, z by derivatives of x prime, y prime, z prime, we'll get something like this. And if you're interested in more details, I've put a link to a more detailed derivation in the description. This bunch of stuff of, on the right hand side appears because the coordinates x prime, y prime, z prime are changing in time, and so time derivatives, let's say, drop additional terms. In these new coordinates, we'd still like to call the part that looks the same as before, the acceleration. So this bunch of stuff that appeared doesn't belong there, and we move it to the left-hand side. We call this bunch of stuff fictitious forces. Fictitious because they appeared as artifacts of the coordinate transformation. They aren't caused by any real interaction. They are there only because of our choice of coordinates. If we write this bunch of stuff explicitly, it will look like this. We call this part that only depends on position the centrifugal acceleration. And this part that only depends on velocity, so derivatives of position, the Coriolis acceleration. When they are multiplied by the object's mass, like this, they become the centrifugal force and Coriolis force. If the angular speed of the rotating frame, omega, was changing, there would be one more part here, called the Euler force. I assumed omega to be constant for the purpose of this derivation, and so it didn't appear. Anyway, this is what the Coriolis effect is in its core. It's the appearance of this term, this fictitious force, in a rotating frame of reference. It manifests as objects turning mid-air when observed by a rotating observer. Because then, even if there are no real forces, that is, if f is zero, the acceleration as measured in the rotating frame can still be non-zero, because of all these additional terms, this bunch of stuff that got introduced by the coordinate transformation. These terms, of course, also have a physical interpretation. The centrifugal force can be thought of as the effect of objects that are at rest in the non-inertial frame having some momentum in the inertial frame and trying to keep it. If such an object keeps moving along a straight line in the inertial frame, red dashed line in the picture, it will look as if it started drifting away from the center in the non-inertial frame. The Coriolis force, on the other hand, can be thought of as the effect of trying to keep the same momentum when moving over different points in the non-inertial frame. Here, cyan arrows represent the velocities of points of the rotating frame, red arrow is the velocity of the object in the inertial frame, and green arrow is the velocity of the object in the rotating frame. Since different points of the rotating frame move, to, move with different velocities relative to the inertial frame, an object that keeps a constant momentum in the inertial frame will have different momentum relative to different points of the non-inertial frame. We can see that the green arrow in the second drawing, after the object moved a bit, is different than in the first drawing, even though the red arrow is the same. Now, since these forces can be interpreted as the object trying to keep its momentum in the inertial frame, and since the resistance to changes of momentum is known as inertia, these forces are also called inertial forces. And even though these forces are fictitious, which sounds like not real, they can have very real effects. 
That's because when you want to cancel their influence, you need to use real forces. If you want to sit still on a spinning merry-go-round, you need a force to balance the centrifugal force. From the point of view of the inertial frame, that force will be the centripetal force, making you go in circles instead of along a straight line. And if you wanted to get up and walk across the merry-go-round in a straight line, you would experience the Coriolis force and would have to counter it as well. In an inertial frame, your path wouldn't look straight, and that would be precisely because of the force you were applying. We do see such effects in reality. The gravitational acceleration seems to be slightly smaller closer to the equator than farther from it, thanks to the centrifugal force. Moving masses of air get deflected by the Coriolis force, creating cyclones spinning counterclockwise north of the equator and clockwise south of it. Pendulums that are isolated from outside forces still drift precisely the way implied by the Coriolis effect. Long-range ballistics has adjustments for Coriolis. There is also a measurable Utfush effect. The weight of objects changes in east-west motion, which is also partially caused by the Coriolis force. Whenever there is a situation in which the Coriolis effect is expected to be significant, we find that it is indeed so. And all of that happens because if we use coordinates relative to the surface of the Earth, then these coordinates are actually rotating. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.